I've got a crazy idea. I'm gonna try and turn this pile of wood into an ultra modern coffee table. Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video. This is gonna be <laughs> very special. I've never done anything like this and I'm super excited for you to see this. The idea is to turn this pile of garden sleepers, which is basically the cheapest type of wood I could buy, into an ultra modern super cool coffee table. Buying this volume of wood would have been super expensive if I bought anything decent, so this was basically my only option. But I never worked with garden sleepers before and this gave me a lot of trouble. I wanted to create as much volume as I could so I could carve something out of it. And I had no idea what I was doing, I have never done anything like it and I was super excited to give it a go. Do you sometimes make decisions that you regret right after you've made them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a workout and I'm only halfway done because I'm done planning but I need to Put all of the boards through the thicknesser. So I've done three sides of each board and now I'm gonna put all of them through the thicknesser to make sure they're the same thickness just to make it easier for me to glue them all together. In case you're wondering, garden sleepers is probably the worst type of wood you can use to make furniture and I learned it the hard way. So I wasn't able to measure the moisture content in the wood and I knew it was wet on the outside but it seemed dry to me after I planed it and I let it dry for a few days. But when I glued everything together the glue wouldn't set even after three days. It was super cold and it was raining the whole time so I wasn't sure if that had something to do with it or whether it was the glue. But it was so frustrating I almost gave up. So. You will see that I really struggled and I used many different methods. I screwed everything together because I didn't have enough clams. I moved it to my house because it was warmer and drier. I ended up taking everything apart and using different type of glue. It did work eventually, but like I said, almost gave up and it took me almost four days until I was actually able to do anything with it. To make it a little easier, I cut some of those beams into shorter pieces and glue them around the midsection just to kind of create the general shape that I was going for so I wouldn't need to cut off as much excess wood. I've said it many times that I wish I could draw and I think carving is the only way for me to turn something that I see in my head into a physical thing. And I've always been very envious of people who can do it with other media. So I was very excited. They were smart people. So I don't need to explain what I'm doing here. But basically I'm just gluing all of those beams together into one huge chunk of wood. And I've never done a glue up like this. And I wasn't sure what's the best way to go about it. But I got there in the end. I think that the reason why the glue up took so long and was just not working is a mixture of the temperature, the moisture in the air and the fact that the wood was not very dry. But I'm pretty confident that with everything that I did behind the scenes this is gonna be just fine and it will stay in one piece. Having said that, let me actually explain what I'm going to make. I've always been fascinated by organic and natural looking furniture, something that doesn't have straight lines and sharp angles and looks like something that you would find in nature or something, you know, straight out of a hobbit's house. I actually carved a bedside table in the past and I'll link the video in the description. So you might have seen it, but nothing on this scale and as complex as this. One drawback to doing something like this before you actually finish it is that with all this wood glued together, this was super heavy, way over 200 pounds. And as you'll see in a minute, I did have to move it a few times 
just to do some initial cutting. So before I put all of this together, I had them glued separately and I left it for over 30 hours and the glue did not set. So I've got a heater set up right now and fingers crossed this is gonna work because otherwise I don't know what to do. I also use my heat gun just to kind of help the drying process. I'm sure it didn't do much as far as the glue on the inside, but I hope it helped a little bit. So after keeping this in my house overnight next to a heater with another heater right next to it, it was finally time to start carving. So to move this extremely heavy thing to my house, I couldn't have all the clamps on it because it was just not manageable. So I used screws and pieces of wood instead to kind of help it stay together until the glue was dry. To get the main shape out of this square thingy, I used a chainsaw and shaped it into something that resembled a sphere, more or less. After watching a few YouTube videos on how to do this, I was basically an expert, so <laughs> I just went for it. Given I never really used a chainsaw before, there was a high risk I was going to seriously injure myself, but like we said, I watched a few YouTube videos, so I was pretty much an expert. So the bit in the middle section was still not dry after three days, but everything in the midsection that I glued around it using different glue was perfectly fine. So I cut off most of the middle bit and hoped that the midsection would hold it together until it dried completely. It was finally time to start carving. This is a tool from Manpa, which is a company that makes tools specifically for carving. And this particular disc is really good at removing a lot of material really quickly, so I used it to get the main shape before I was actually able to get any detailed work. And as always, the shop inspector came to check on the progress and approve my work. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I was in pain for three days straight, my back was killing me and mad respect to people who do this on a regular basis because it was an incredible amount of work. Here I'm just drawing some general shapes that I want to carve out and as I said before this is an organic shape so this is not an exact science but just to give me a rough idea where I was going with this. This was a very low quality wood with lots of knots and it was also chemically treated. I never work with anything like this so I really didn't know how it would react to stain but it actually worked out quite okay. Just to give you an idea, this part took almost three days and I didn't even have my camera on for most of it because it would have been extremely boring for you to watch it. It was pretty boring for me to actually do it, but I just put some music on and I just powered through it. This is another tool from Manpa and this is a smaller disc for more precise work, but it also comes with an arm or like an extension thing that makes it easier to get into a deeper section or carve holes or things like what I'm doing right now. So I used pretty much everything that I had in my workshop <laughs> and I don't know if it was the best tool for the job and you'll see me use all sorts of things just to get it done. 
can you see that huge pile of wood chips behind me? <laughs> it was only half of it at that point. I already took some of it out. I don't think my workshop has ever been this dirty. Everything was just absolutely covered in dust and wood chips. And I think it took me a day and a half to kind of clean it up. I'm cutting the base off, even though I was thinking about carving legs out of it at one point, but I actually bought some legs that I wanted to use for this coffee table. And I also use my hand planer just to flatten the top portion of it, because it was meant to be a coffee table, so I wanted to be able to actually put things on it. There were two things I wanted to accomplish with this project, so I wanted this super cheap wood look expensive and really nice and I also wanted to have a lot of storage on top of a flat surface on the top of this coffee table and make it very functional for everyday use. So all the pockets around the table on top of just looking cool and making it look unusual and organic they're also going to be very functional and I'll be able to store all sorts of things in them. And no, I'm not going to keep these legs, it's just temporary to help me get an idea how tall it's going to be. And let's talk about sanding, because <laughs> if you think that I do a lot of sanding on my regular project, Wow, I mean, I don't even know where to begin, because as you can see, the texture that I get from using these tools is super rough. So I had to sand this entire thing, and that just took days. There's still lots of cracks and imperfections and holes from the screws and because of I had to re-glue this whole thing several times. It's not perfect but don't worry about it, I'll fix all of it and I'm just using some wood filler right now but I'll do other things off camera like using furniture wax and other things. Two thousand years later. And these are just some of very many tools and attachments and bits that I used to try and get the finish that I wanted. There is not much to say about this, so I'll let you guys just watch me do this and use all sorts of tools to get the effect that I was going for. But I do want to say thank you to everyone who likes, comments on my videos and supports my channel by buying me coffees or hitting the super thanks button or using my Amazon wishlist link. It really means a lot and that's the only reason I'm able to do what I do. And as always, huge thank you to all of the channel members, you guys are awesome. And as always, all the links are in the description. Thank you. At this point, I removed so much material from this coffee table that it was probably half the weight of what it was originally, so I could actually move it around much easier. And because it was raining in England for about a week straight, I had to do the whole thing in my workshop. And obviously, because of all the dust and wood chips, that was not ideal. 
and I had to wear a mask the whole time. But for the first time during this project, I started to feel like I was actually getting somewhere and it looked like I was going to be able to pull it off. And just to show you what a mess I made, here's a few shots from what my workshop looked like in the middle of this project. I used two of these cut cell spheres and one of them is fine. I was hoping that it would give me similar finish to sanding, but it didn't. At this point, I had been carving and sanding for many days and for a change it was a decent weather, though a bit cold, so I decided to take a few hours off and go on a little road trip. If you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love road trips. I even built this pull-out kitchen and a sleeping platform to make it more convenient, but when you're on the road, having portable power is absolutely essential. Luckily, with Jackery it's super easy. This unit is called Explorer 1000 Pro, it's very compact and portable but very powerful. As you can see I can make myself a cup of tea, but it can also power most of my portable power tools. Also use it to power my induction plate and make myself some food on the go, but you can use it for so many other things. And when you're away from your home, being able to generate power with solar panels is very important and with Jackery you can do that. You can recharge it with your regular wall socket or with the 12 volt socket in your car. And you can also monitor everything on a very convenient display. Jackery is a leading global brand with millions of units sold and they're running special deals this month and I'll link all of them in the description so check them out and thank you so much to Jackery for sponsoring this video. And back to sanding. You didn't think I was done with it, did you? And to add something about Jackery, you know how people have sponsored bits in their videos and they say that the product is wonderful and everything is perfect, but sometimes they don't really mean it because they just do it for sponsorships. In this case with Jackery, I actually use the products in my everyday life and I genuinely like them. And I do try to work with companies that I can stand behind and I don't need to come up with ways to say nice things about them when I don't really believe it myself. If you feel like you've been watching the same thing for the last 10 minutes... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it felt like to me but more like 10 days, not 10 minutes. But fortunately, I'm pretty much done sanding and I'm about to do the next step. Before you start typing your comments, hold your horses and just trust the process. Seriously, just trust the process and see what I come up with. So I wanted to stain the insides of those carved out bits black and as you can see, the brushing didn't really work, so I came up with a very easy and super cheap way to actually spray the stain on, and you can do this at home as well. This spray bottle has a very fine mist, and it works just great for this application, and I think I paid two pounds for it on Timo. Because the insides of those carved out areas were not as smooth as I wanted them to be, I could have just torched them, but you would have torched me if I did, as I know that most of you guys don't like it. So the other idea that I came up with was staining them black. And also using dark colors can elevate the look of wood and make it look more expensive. And you'll just see in the end what I'm talking about. 
And these are the legs for this piece. They are made of metal, so they will help with the weight and make it much more sturdy. I used three legs, not four, because I think it looks much better with this style of furniture. And also it's just much easier to level it because it's got irregular shape. On the sanded bits I sprayed a coat of lacquer just to kind of seal everything before the next step, which was to use lacquer toner and make this cheap wood look like nice walnut. And finally for the top coat I used satin lacquer and it was done. <laughs> what a journey. I hope you guys are still awake and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm curious if you expected anything like this when you saw the pile of wood that I started with. And give me a like and subscribe if you haven't and enjoy the final results. Thanks again to Jackery for sponsoring this video and see you soon.